If you've got a one-off part you've got to make, let me show you how easy it is using our Pro Palette system and our vacuum palette while I tackle a little weekend project. Let's get started. My house has an old intercom doorbell system that I'm replacing with a new video doorbell. The new doorbell is smaller in size, so to help it fit in the old box, I'm heading into the shop to create a custom adapter plate for a one-off part. Here, I'm using an eighth inch thin piece of aluminum, so a vacuum chuck is a perfect choice to hold it. I'm outlining the gasket to fit close to the stock's edge to maximize the surface area exposed to the vacuum. Here, I'm using a technique where I brush the surface for a nice decorative look. A couple passes with the three inch brush spinning at 10 RPM should give me the look I'm going for. Now it's really hard to show when it's covered by streams of coolant, so let me show you the machining strategy in Fusion 360. Here's the vacuum chuck, then here's the stock, which was some leftover material I had laying around at the shop. That's why it's significantly larger than the part. And finally, our design part. Now let me walk you through some of the tool paths. The first is that three inch brush that I showed you. Next is the contour with an eighth inch end mill, and I'm leaving about three thousandths of material at the bottom of the part so that I don't break through and lose vacuum. With the same end mill, I'm interpolating the holes and doing a spiral tool path here to create an 82 degree countersink. Then I'm hitting the edges with a chamfer tool. Lastly, I'm using a roll forming tap in the screw holes. Now keep in mind that with this tap, I'm not going all the way through the part just yet. I'm leaving the material at the bottom so that I can easily poke it through with a tap later on. Now, let's get back to machining the part. I repeated the same brushing technique as I did in the beginning to break the new edges. Since I didn't machine all the way through the part to maintain vacuum, the three thousandths of material left at the bottom can be easily broken through along the edges using the blade of a utility knife. To break through the tapped holes, I just poked it with an awl and used my roll tap to break out any remaining material and finished off the thread. I also hit the edges on a belt sander too. So it's out with the old and in with the new. A little touch up paint around the siding and this one off part project is a wrap. Now if you want more examples, be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Pearson Workholding. And as usual, you can find more information on all our products at our website at PearsonWorkholding.com. Now, go innovate your production.